I'm now going to invite up our student speaker, it's Natalie Brennan, who is going to regale us. Can you hear me okay? Is this it usually happens when I'm sitting in the back of an Uber, or meeting someone's parents. Actually, I guess that it happened to a lot of you this week, as you said you were coming to this very event. Maybe your own parents are still thinking it at this very moment. <laughs> huh, history. What are you gonna do with that? <laughs> Teach? Teach. I'm always struck by the teaching part. It's so specific, narrowing, and not because there's anything particularly problematic about teaching. The way I was taught was maybe the most beautiful thing about this major. I'm where I am today, and so are you, because of the teachers history teachers. Where the problem then lies is in how robotic the response is, how sure the inquisitor is of her question, as if the only thing we could do with learning history is spit it back out. It's not something that lives and transforms and grows, something we can absorb from and go on from. It only is, meant to be heard and memorized and then shot back out, only to repeat the cycle once more. Despite how frequently this occurs, I still always choke on my answer. For a while, I'd say, I'm thinking about going to law school, actually. <laughs> and I did. I thought and I thought about law school. And I guess I still am, perpetually. Aren't we all kind of always thinking about going to law school? I think 10 years from now, it might still be my default. I'm uncomfortable talking about my career. I think I'm going to law school. <laughs> my dad likes to tell me that law school teaches you how to think. I've been thinking a lot about what, he's, what history teaches you. I don't know where history is taking me. I guess that's the honest truth. And it's not one that frightens me either. I quite purposely sought out to major in something that consumed me. I wasn't as concerned with the end goal, I was concerned with the present. I guess I was concerned with the past too. I majored in history. <laughs> but I wanted to lose track of time in my work. I wanted to set myself up for success, but my definition of success was less linear. I believed that passionate learning would lead to hard work, hard work, would lead to real world application, would lead to X, would lead to Y. I'm still figuring out my X and Y, but I feel confident that history gave me exactly what I was looking for. I majored in this subject because Howard Brick could hold my attention in a USB lecture hall like no one else. I majored in history because I, I found myself voluntarily reading Matthew Lasseter's assigned readings twice, and then the third time, and then I made an entire podcast about the war on crimes and drugs in modern America because I still wasn't over the material I had learned. There was a time when I spent more days than not in Ellen Poteet's office hours. I decided to major in history when my own professors were helping lead the teach-ins. <coughs> they weren't just teaching the past, they were leading the present. I'd go straight from politics and culture of the 1960s to the dyad, to no justice, no peace. From learning about this very activism to participating in it. I majored in history because I loved the way my present was synchronized with the past. In class, we'd read Clara Zetkin's 1908 Women's Work and the Organization of the Trade Union, and the next day would be International Women's Day. We majored in history, but we just as well majored in the present, in storytelling, in the art of remembering. We majored in history as written by the victors, and don't you forget whose story wasn't written down. We majored in double space, 12 pages, and the active voice. <laughs> In active voices, in the riots, in 1967 and 1856 too, emancipation. And then 100 years later, we majored in a letter to James Baldwin's nephew as the country celebrated these 100 years of freedom, 100 years too early. We majored in the Bracero program and the benefits of open gate migration flows. We majored in here and there and all the lands in between. There was a brief time where I majored in learning all 54 countries on Africa's map. We majored in reading and while well, in the process learning to read fast. We majored in efficiency, in research. We absolutely majored in research. In the Chicago Manual Style Guide, we majored... <laughs> We majored in footnotes and a letter from Birmingham jail. We majored in the facts and the dates and the faces, don't you forget the faces. The faces that appeared on the front of the Birmingham news. The ones that woke up a nation and kick-started a movement. We majored in capital H history and histories and the feeling that this too today is history. 
Can't you imagine the students who will take history and culture of the 2010s? We majored in the hot wars of the Cold War, in Vietnam. I majored in watching the way nightly news could change public opinion, in the way Walter Cronkite brought LBJ's war home to living rooms across America. I guess most accurately, I want history to take me there. In a way, I do want to teach history. Maybe in creating more nuanced news, in writing more detailed op-eds, in the conversations I have on the way to work. I want to teach history, but I'm still working on picking what my classroom will be. I don't know where history is taking me, but I do know what it has brought me, and the things I don't get to write on my resume, and all the answers I forget to say when someone says, huh, history. <laughs> And so the student stops being a student. <laughs>